Now, this is the last story I'm doing for this week. I'm done for the week, as far as I can see. I chose something a little special, a, a landmark story. A story that establishes a well-known villain and a concept that would have given the show almost a, practically immortality. The Tenth Planet. Fans may not know, but if you don't know, let me tell you the big importance here. The big villain that's introduced is the Cybermen, and the concept, of course, is regeneration. Last story for William Hartnell. How does it hold up? It honestly doesn't. I'm going to be very blunt. Um, the Tenth Planet is only, again, well-known for those things. As a story? Um, it's not Tomb of the Cybermen. True, it is. The, the writer of it is one of the co-writers to, of Tomb of the Cybermen, Kit Pedler. Kit Pedler, who is the uh, scientific, who was the time the scientific advisor for Doctor Who, and came up with the idea for these interesting little cybernetic beings that, of course, are very relevant villains for the show now. And many people still argue that the Borg are a ripoff of the characters. I. I'm not going to fully say it. I'm pretty sure Paramount's kind of slightly admitted it by now, but they, they've stand the test of time. They're a concept that's, I'm sure, reused, of course. Um, they, take, they take people and turn them more cybernetic. Now, the story itself is a very basic base under siege story, which if this was Troughton, I'd probably scream because he's, he's well known for that. But this isn't this is not Troughton, this is Hartnell. This story is also the um, first story I've done well, that's a reconstruction. Granted, it's easy to do because only the last episode is reconstructed with rumors that they're animating it, but there's no confirming. I'd be happy to see animation songs. It's not... It, animation's fine. I'd prefer it something look good, but whatever. Okay. So, it's in the far-off future of 1984. I love that. Where, you know, there's this Arctic base. We discover a planet which is Mondas. Back when Pluto was still considered a planet, this was the 10th planet. This was Earth's twin. Comes back and hijinks ensues. The doctor is um, napping a lot for this story, mostly because of William Hartnell's illness, which led to the big change. We're stuck with characters who, not just, just the supporting cast, I just couldn't get behind. Companions do some stuff. Ben and Polly. Um, I've never seen them in anything yet. This is the first time I ever saw them. I like them. Polly came off as a very standard, oh no, kind of character. And Ben is a sailor who just doesn't have that much defining character. He's just like, I'm the tough guy. And I'm the girl. They're fun. They're nice. Uh, they, the actors are likable. It's just, besides the fact that you know, they're more involved in the plot than the Doctor because Hartnell couldn't do much. It's a little heartbreaking. Um, Cybermen themselves are interesting. They have a voice that annoys the hell out of you, probably, if it's annoying you now. I like it. It's cold, shiver. But, uh, I don't know. It's just, you could just tell that it's someone doing this. I love how they worked. I love the fact that they had someone off camera doing it and they just simply like opened their mouth without moving their lips really and just had sound come out like a speaker. Their look on one hand is ridiculous. It's obviously junk put together, but I like the very mummy-esque look to it. You can tell that there's a human still there. Um, another little detail is, and this is something you just kind of pick up, the fact that these, th this isn't, th it's not battle kind of, it's not a battle kind of look. It's very much a, they just swung this together so they can survive. The planet was swinging through Earth and, like, it, spare parts established it very well. But it, I, I liked the fact that this wasn't really, like, they had, the weapons they had were very bulky and it's obvious this stuff was just made so they could live. Like, early space suits. A lot like early astronaut suits. Well, astronaut suits still. It's a lot like that. They're just designed to work, not really designed to move. Their function's a little, in a way, limited. 
But that's just kind of how technology works. It's kind of an analog for technology. They'll upgrade, get, you know, sleeker, more streamlined looks to the point where they'll eventually look like the way they look in the modern series. They're an interesting threat. And combated with, in, with what I'm only describing as sheer ridiculousness because the leader of the base simply says, We're going to use the Z-bomb. Yeah. It's very basic. Hey, robot aliens are here. Let's blow them up. No. Oh, no. My body's wearing thin. Ah, turn into Patrick Troughton. Uh, and, the, and that's the thing. I've talked about it. Hardnell is not in it that much. In fact, here's here's the kind of sad note. Hartnell doesn't appear at all in episode three. The the his last uh, here's the thing. The last episode that exists in his era, and he's not even in it. That's a little funny, isn't it? And also, um, the fact that we we have to watch the episode for reconstruction, which is tough to do. I is this worth seeking out? I I just. Don't think so. I mean, again, it's just well known because it interests. I can't speak, talk about the idea. It's just an idea. That's the thing about Kid Peller. I've realized compared comparing this to Tomb, he's an idea man, not a writer. He he just doesn't write the characters interestingly. Um, if there's anything like Hartnell when he's around, definitely putting up his best. It, it, it it's just weak on the writing and only introduces two stand like things that will stand the test of time for the show. I don't really wonder. I can't recommend you go seek it out. I mean, because again, you, you you'll see the clip of the regeneration that survived. But you can just go find it on YouTube. The Cybermen are a bit chilling. They're, they're, when they're on screen, you're of course staring at them for one reason or another. Either you're fascinated by the goofy costumes, or you're legitimately kind of frightened by them, or, or find them kind of frightening. Because they are us. They're us in upgrade form. That's the scary thing about the Cybermen in general. But that's not a story. That's just a few things that I, that can't hold a story up high enough. I'm sorry if you actually have seen this and like it, but it just didn't leave an imprint on me.